It was one night I couldn't sleep because I couldn't breathe. And I knew in that moment, like, this is it. I'm dying and there's nothing else the hospital can do to help me relieve this asthma attack. I prayed and I just said, please help me. Like, I don't want to die. I started to feel on my left side this loving, energetic presence who I just knew it was Mother Mary. As I'm lying there, there's another presence. This presence was Archangel Michael. They started to literally breathe their essence into my chest. I was starting to feel relief. And as I was feeling relief, I just started, I just started leaving my body. My thoughts and my consciousness were completely intact. So I just said, what's happening? And Archangel Michael said, this is a divine intervention. We are here to tell you that you are not your body. You are not your mind. You are part of a whole with source. My name is Amber Baker, and I'm from Malibu, California. I was a little bit different as a child. I was very quiet and introspective, very much alive in my inner world, like thinking and imagining. I was an artist and I painted and I would draw a lot. And I knew that that was something that I had to pursue. So I went to art school. I had graduated with a degree in fine arts and I got married quite young, 25 years old. I really embraced more the role of being a wife. And I had my first son at the age of 28. And then I had another son at the age of 30. I think that when I got married quite young, I lost a a sense of my own identity, even though I loved being a mother and I felt fulfilled in many areas of my life, I knew that there was something missing. I started to ask myself questions like, is there something more to life? And so I started to explore myself and to really, like I said, ask those questions. And the questions that I asked led me to the conclusion that I wasn't in the marriage, that really I felt was where I wanted to be. And so I did get divorced. And it was a very difficult time because I had young children and My son was struggling at school. He had some learning disability. He needed services. He needed a tutor. And I couldn't provide for him what I thought he needed. My ex-husband, he was not able to help financially. And the feeling of maybe not being able to provide for your children is, um, it's just difficult because I I think I felt like a failure at that time. And I felt like I, you know, was in my mid to late thirties and that I should have it together by that time. I really got caught up in the emotions of the experiences that I was going through and the struggles. I was in this loop of not knowing what to do, but then not knowing how to get out of it. Some people can say it's a dark night of the soul, but for me, it was a real crisis. I was also going through a lot of health issues. I developed this autoimmune disorder that later was diagnosed as as POTS syndrome. I basically wasn't able to regulate my blood pressure. And so when I would stand up, I would start to feel like I was going to pass out. I think my body was just completely having a nervous breakdown. I had asthma growing up, and if I were to get sick with my asthma, it would, you know, make it worse, of course. And so this illness that I had 
it immediately caused this inflammation in my throat and my chest and this weight on my chest. So I was going to the hospital, I was going to different specialists and doctors, getting on a very high dose of steroids, getting my own breathing machine at home, but nothing was working to have any sense of relief. This illness uh, just wasn't going away and the asthma was getting worse and worse and worse. And so I was bedridden and feeling at this point, like I, now I'm, I think I'm gonna die. I don't know how to catch my breath. I was in this period of just feeling helpless. It was one night I couldn't sleep because I couldn't breathe. It was the middle of the night and it went from bad to worse. And I just knew in that moment, like, this is it. Like I'm, I'm dying and there's nothing else the hospital can do to help me relieve th this asthma attack. I prayed to my grandmother who had already passed. She was in spirit. We were very, very close our growing up my whole life with her. And so I prayed to her because I really didn't know what else to do. And I prayed to her from a, a place of surrender and a deep need. And I just said, Grandma, please help me. Like, I don't want to die. A white, misty form came from across my room. Her presence was all around me. It felt like she laid her hands on my forehead. When she laid her hands over my forehead, I just started to calm down and feel a huge sense of relief and peace. And my whole body was able to, to just relax. And I really felt like I was kind of like sinking into the bed. And then my chest was starting to open and I started to be able to feel like I could breathe just a little bit. I started to feel on my left side this loving, loving, energetic presence who I just knew it was Mother Mary. It was just like a thousand percent knowing. And Mother Mary felt like she was anchoring me in this loving presence. She really felt uh, like she was the anchor of love. She, was un she is unconditional love. And my grandmother was there too and a part of this, and she was also unconditional love. As I'm lying there, I'm looking in front of me and there's another presence. This presence filled the entire space and he was at least 20 feet tall. And he also I knew was Archangel Michael. And he had a sense of a form, but it is not like maybe the depiction of, you know, Archangel Michael with the sword, but he was a male presence and he was enormous. The way that he filled the room and made himself known, I've never felt such presence in my life. It, he permeated this, this presence. And so as I was lying there, I had my grandmother and Mary and Archangel Michael just surrounding me. They shared with me what I was storing in my lungs. What I was storing in my lungs was grief and sadness and trauma. And I was holding on to the guilt of my divorce, they told me. I was holding on not just to my own emotions, but to what I felt like I was doing wrong as a mother. They said to me, you have to release this sorrow. They started to literally breathe their this energy, their essence into my chest. And I felt like I was starting to open up my chest and I was starting to feel relief. And as I was feeling relief, I just started, I just started leaving my body. I just had this very visceral feeling of this lightness. 
floating up away from my body. My thoughts and my consciousness were completely intact. So I was, I just said, what's happening? I said, I talked to my grandma and I said, I, I, I thought you were here to save me and now I'm dying. That's when my grandmother stepped aside and Archangel Michael became the communicator. And he said, you are not going to die. This is not your time. I'm traveling through what feels like this tunnel. The tunnel felt warm. It felt like it had this kind of orange glow, but it was dark at the same time. And he starts to take me what feels like on a journey of looking at where I'm at in my life at that time. And he said, this is a divine intervention. We are here to tell you that you are not defined by your thoughts and your struggles. You are not your body. You are not your mind. And you see, I thought I was my illness. Like I thought I have asthma, I am asthma, I can't breathe, that's it. I don't, I'm struggling financially, that's who I am. I'm sad, I'm depressed, that's who I am. And so that in itself was this like revelation. As he would communicate with me, the words would infuse into me the truth of what he said. So it was like this instant realization, like, oh yes, yes, that is true, you know? So it felt like he was expanding what I knew to be true at that time. He was also showing to me my life and he was showing me by example, like it shows a scene of me crying, you know? You are not your emotions. You are a seed in the universe. I am unlimited presence and power. I am omnipotent. And I am part of a whole with source. He said, in order for you to fully understand what I am revealing to you, you are going to become one with this consciousness that is source, this one omnipotent power. And so I started to travel again at that time, what I felt like I was going towards the center of the universe. It felt like my consciousness was becoming one with the one consciousness that we are all a part of. What I realized is God is a consciousness. It is an energy. It is all of us together. And so I was able to experience the, the, the merging of me with Source, the experience of being able to feel the euphoria and the eternity of that and the complete oneness, really absence of thought and feeling and just in this permanent state of kind of like rapture just this state of bliss. When you align into that state of being, you are no longer just in your physical body. You are energy. And now I understand no matter what we're experiencing, we are this expanded consciousness. And so I had that juxtaposition of before the NDE, really feeling confined and, and attached to my feelings and creating my reality in that confinement. And then I had that experience of unlimited power and presence. So we create our reality is what I realized. We have free will, we have unlimited power and potential. We are that expanded consciousness. But because we're so powerful, we also get to create the reality that we live in. So if you believe that you are limited, or if you believe that you are the feelings that you feel or the thoughts that you think, then you're going to create that reality. 
it's the biggest gift I could have ever received in my whole life. That no matter what you're feeling or thinking, you have the power to awaken into a new state of being. And there's nothing in your way, no circumstance. No circumstance, you know, I had all the circumstances that maybe should have looked like, no, you're not that, you're not successful. No, you can't do that. Like, no, you're, you know, in a horrible, like, phys you know, physical state. But then they showed to me who I, who I really am. He said to me, your mission is to teach others how to connect to their own divine presence and to teach them that we all are unlimited power and potential and possibility at all time. That is just the truth of who we are. So we experience, you know, thoughts and feelings, but we're not defined by them. After I was one with Source, my consciousness slowly moved away from that state of oneness. I was still with Archangel Michael, and I was still completely out of my body. And I guess you could say you're traveling through maybe realms or, or stages of consciousness. I was just really moving through what felt like this void. They said, you're gonna go back into your body now. And they explained to me that our consciousness is stored in our in this chakra system. You know, these, these energy centers that we have in our bodies. And so they really, this was a gift because they really showed me how to access my consciousness in the physical body. And when I was reassimilated back into my body, the expansion of my consciousness that I experienced in the oneness of Source was then infused in that whole state with each chakra so that my divine presence was fully integrated into my physical body. So that divine activation also, in a way, cleansed or transformed um, my mind, body, soul. It I had a a release of of like the feelings and that that struggle that I was in and I really felt the awareness of yes this is who I am I am a divine being once I was fully dropped back into my body the guides archangel michael they really spoke to me as one it felt like and they said meditate on the silence, you are one. And there was a gentle swirl of wind, a little bit of like a breeze next to me. And then all of a sudden they were gone. I came back into my body. I remember looking around and crying and just knowing that my life would never be the same. I was able to go down this like empowering path of really tuning into my body, this mind, body, soul connection, knowing that my emotions can be stored in my body, knowing how to release my emotions and feel them and not attach myself to them really actually helped me heal not just from my asthma, but to be able to move on in my life in this empowering way. After the NDE, it wasn't like my circumstances changed, it was that I changed. I had this sense of freedom because I knew that I was able to now transform. I knew I was not my circumstances. And because I wasn't allowing myself to be defined by them, I was able to make that choice to move forward in a new path. My life completely took a 360. Every second of the day, I was reading and, and uh, watching and, and looking for spiritual information. I was hungry for it. It was like I couldn't get enough of 
wanting to know more and experience more of what I just experienced. I started to study energy healing, and then I started teaching other people how to tap into that expanded state of consciousness, how to tap into who they really are at that soul level, who they really are as a divine being. I do think that it's really important that we know the difference of living only thinking that we are this physical body and that this is all there is to us versus knowing that there's this whole other possible realm that we can tap into because we're not taught this in school. And we, because of that, it can lend itself to leading our life in a very disempowered way. And so I think that's why I love to share my message because it's changed my life so much. We are unlimited possibilities and potentials at all times. And really the only limitations that we have are the ones we accept or what we place on ourselves. And usually it is us that creates like the walls and the prison that we might live in. We have to take responsibility at some point for what we allow to be our truth. And so, yes, there is this whole realm of angels and beings that want to help us, and they do. They step in at times of need. But this human life, the purpose of it is for us to make our own decisions and to learn and to grow from our experiences and through our own free will. Nobody can do it for us. We have to learn ourselves. And because our consciousness is free and unlimited, we can create our reality through our consciousness. No matter where you're at right now in your life, whatever circumstance you're in, whatever emotional state or state of being that you're in, it, it matters. There's wisdom there, and embracing where you're at is important. The first step towards transforming into your divine presence will always be to honor and embrace where you're at now, but to look further, to ask yourself questions. Are you out of alignment with your path? What is? What are these emotional feelings or these things? these thoughts trying to teach you. Within that exploration of asking yourself questions is for you to know that no matter what state you're in now, because you are a transformational being and because all possibilities and potentials exist for you and for me, always, no matter what, you have the ability to heal you have the ability to transcend, to awaken, and to tap into your whole essence, your true essence. And it might take many, many times of going from a, a place of struggle or a place of identifying with insecurities and then remembering again who you really are. But every time you awake back into who you are, you learn something, you find yourself again, and you expand the light of source because every time you remember who you are, that is the purpose of our evolution, is to expand consciousness. You are love. You are unlimited potentials and possibilities. You can transcend, you can transform at any time back into your loving essence, and that is who you really are.